Okay, so one of the things that we just talked about was trying to increase the gain of an operational amplifier to reduce the systematic errors that happen when we have low gain. The schematic we're looking at is called a telescopic cascode amplifier, and it consists of a cascoded differential pair consisting of Q1 and Q2 with the stack transistors Q3 and Q4, and a cascode current source consisting of transistors Q5, Q6, Q7, and Q8. Now, the differential pair operates exactly as it did in the non-cascoded differential pair with current mirror load. And so it stands to reason that the GM is the same, the big GM is the same. That is to say that big GM is equal to little GM one or two. To find what the impact on the output resistance is, we need to find the resistance looking up and the resistance looking down from the output node. The resistance looking up is just a cascode, so we can write that it's equal to RO6 times 1 plus GM6 times RO8. Now we note that the ROs are approximately equal to one another, and we also note that GM6 times RO8 is, is usually much bigger than 1, so we can write an approximation for this and say that it's approximately equal to GM RO squared. Now, for R looking down, we first need to find the resistance looking into the collector of Q2. This resistance looking into the collector of Q2 is equal to 2RO2. This is because when it, we look towards the source of Q1, we see a 1 over GM1. Knowing this, we can now write the resistance looking down. It's equal to RO4 times 1 plus 2 GM4 RO2. And again, if the resistances are approximately equal and GM times RO is much bigger than 1, we can approximate this as 2 times GM RO squared. Now, let's assume that we need to now find the resistance looking into the output node. So we're going to put a test voltage source and measure the current flowing through it. So if we write KCL at the drain node, or at the collector node, we have IX is equal to VX divided by R up. In other words, we cause a current to flow up in this direction. Plus VX divided by R down. In other words, we cause a current to flow down towards Q4. Now that current isn't going to want to go into the tail current source because it has a high impedance, so it's going to want to continue towards the low impedance of the, the, of the emitter of Q1. And if it does, it will continue up into this current mirror where it will be mirrored to the output. So we'll get a second contribution of current at the output of Vx R down. So we have Vx over Ix is equal to R total, is equal to the parallel combination of R up and parallel with R down and parallel with R down. This is approximately equal to Gm RO squared over 2. Now we know that our voltage gain is just equal to big Gm times big RT. And we can say that it's approximately equal to GM squared RO squared over 2. So indeed, the gain is massive for this cascoded amplifier. In fact, it's approximately equal to the intrinsic gain squared divided by a half. What's the, the sacrifice? Well, the bandwidth is going to be smaller in this amplifier. So for instance, our High frequency pole is going to be dominated by the output node most likely. That's going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times that RT that we just found times the C total at that node. We can call the C total at that node any load capacitance plus the parasitic device capacitance.
which will be CMU6 and CMU4. Now let's talk about the other drawback of using a CAS code, and that is the operating range of the voltages at the input and output. Before we talk about the voltage ranges, it would be nice to come up with a metric for the base to collector voltage that tells us whether the device is on in the forward active region that's very similar to our metric for the MOS device. Here we have a bipolar transistor, and we know for it to be on, the collector to emitter voltage has to be greater than a VCE sat, and the base to emitter voltage has to be greater than a VBE on. Now, typically, we find that VCE sat is around 0.2 volts, and VBE on is around 0.7 volts for the bipolar transistor. So, for the bipolar transistor to be on, let's assume that VBE has to be greater than VBE on. We know that VE is equal to VC minus a VCE sat and the device is just on the edge of saturation. We can make a substitution, VB minus VC minus VCE sat. Has to be greater than a VBE on. Now we can write VBC has to be greater than VBE on minus a VCE sat in order for the device to be in the forward active region. So now we have a criteria for the base to collector uh, where, it, where it has two known voltages. Now for a typical transistor, we know that this would be that VBC needs to be greater than about 0.5 volts. All right, so here we have that CASCO transistor with all the required voltages written at the term, written across the collector to emitter terminals of the devices. You can see that in most cases we have either a VEB or a VCE SAT that's required across those terminals. If we have a diode connection, it's forcing the VEB or VBE, and if we have no diode connection, then we just have a VCE SAT. So we can find the voltage at the collector to find the maximum input voltage that we can put on the transistor. VC1 here. So we have a condition, VBC1 has to be greater than a VBE on minus a VCE sat. We can substitute a value for VC1 which is just equal to VDD minus 2VEB minus a VCE sat. And now we can solve the inequality to find the maximum voltage allowed across or at the input. This is the common mode input voltage. Solving the inequality, we find that the input voltage needs to be greater than 2VEB on plus a VBE on minus a VDD. Now, for the minimum supply voltage, we need to go down towards the negative supply. Here we have that VBE needs to be greater than a VBE on. So we have VI minus VE, which is just equal to VEE plus a V. CE sat has to be greater than a VBE on. I'm going to fix my algebra on this upper uh, voltage here. It should be VI is less than VDD minus 2VEB minus a VBE. I just multiplied through by a negative one for the whole inequality, and that fixes the inequality. So we're finding the maximum voltage. Now we've found the minimum voltage. VI has to be greater than VEE 
plus BBE plus a BCE set. All right, so now we found the min and max common mode input voltage. What about the output swing? The output is gonna be limited by the upper transistors, so we can write that the output maximum swing, BO has to be less than BDD minus BBE minus, or sorry, I should say VEB minus the VEC set. This is the upper path. In the lower path, we can say V out has to be greater than three, or sorry, two, or three VCE set plus VEE. All right, so we can see our cascade amplifier did indeed increase the gain very significantly, but we did pay two penalties in that it will have a narrower bandwidth than the non cascoded amplifier and also has a less uh, less possible voltage swing or less voltage headroom as we like to call it. So we're going to stop there for the day and we'll keep looking at operational amplifiers in our next set of videos.